Hi, I'm concerned there's a fundamental misunderstanding amongst home buyers and specialist damp surveyors about the movement of hygroscopic salts in brickwork, such as ones released from chimneys when chimney breasts are altered. I don't want to embarrass the PCA as it's done many good things, such as implementing the new guidelines. However, the trigger for my concern was a dampness in buildings webinar given last Thursday, which was seen by over 400 damp surveyors and contractors. The only example of rising damp in the webinar is, in my opinion, misleading. Here's a picture of some rising damp. Another the source of moisture. It does not look like rising damp as the damp patch is far too high for rising damp, about two and a half metres off the ground, and is not horizontal. The damp patch looks like it was created by hygroscopic salts, probably from a chimney breast. The problem, again in my opinion, is that rising damp is consistently misdiagnosed, this being a good example. The consequence of misdiagnosis is damaging and often ineffective treatment. I find damp patches from these salts in about 30% of my surveys in summer, including two properties so far this week. See the inside and then outside of some examples. All of these properties were misdiagnosed as rising damp by another surveyor. Hygroscopic salts are relatively easy to diagnose as water at normal levels of humidity evaporates leaving a cold patch, whereas Damp from hygroscopic salts only evaporates below the critical relative humidity, which is about 50% for calcium nitrate, the most common hygroscopic salt found in homes. It therefore does not show up as distinctly through an infrared camera as normal damp. You can also test for nitrates. The solution is to cover these damp salts in a non-porous medium with substantial overlap which can be as simple as a coat of gloss paint followed by emulsion for small damp spots. Removing plaster and covering hygroscopic salts in slurry, as is the standard treatment for rising damp, causes salts to dissolve, drawing them to the new surface, as can be seen here. I believe salts in this wall, which probably came from a chimney, but might have come from manure, were redistributed through rain, airflow and evaporation. Rainwater can bounce much higher than the minimum 150 mil gap below a damp roof course. It can cause calcium nitrate from manure to splatter a wall, which can then become drawn up by rain-saturated brickwork. The salts distribute themselves in a sort of Goldilocks evaporation band, depending on various factors such as temperature and rain. Look at some salt bands which could not be explained by groundwater alone. Horizontal bands are very common, so are vertical bands. Sometimes together, sometimes from chimneys, sometimes from manure. This property is interesting in that the internal hygroscopic damp spots are above the window and doorway which cannot be explained by rising damp. Looking outside, we can see both a long horizontal band and faint vertical band above the doorway. The neighbour is an army barracks, so I guess there were stables. Then looking at Google Maps over 10 years, we can see that these white salts found in the centre of the dark band are recent and also found above the door compared to 10 years ago. Looking through a thermal image, you can see heat loss through the short section of wall which is acting as the thermal fin. Paula joined me on a survey a few years ago. Our last property had a good example of a short section of wall acting as a thermal fin, increasing the risk of mould in the corner. The salt band in this wall is both horizontal and vertical. There is a thermal fin, but apparently no chimney stack. I think the fundamental misunderstanding of hygroscopic salts is significant. It should be investigated and considered in any survey of traditional properties.